R O Muted still? Am I muted now? Ash is on mute? Oh my god. <laughs> Can you hear me on now? Okay, okay, good, good, good. Oh lord. Listen, let me tell you, streaming, right? Am I right? The life of a streamer. Listen, listen, I'm telling y'all today. Um, I don't know if you all know, but um, my name is Ash and I just started streaming like yesterday. To be fair, we hold her the whole th Thank you, Joy. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, welcome everybody. It's so great to see you all. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for uh, letting me know, you know, thank you for uh, <laughs> helping me fix that. Okay, well, I have an amazing show planned for you today. Hello, everybody. Dr. Poxy Shinken. Uh, I see Curious Joy pleasantly twisted Meadow in the chat. I Thank you, Meadow, for gifting that tier one sub to Ice Trade. I was very kind of you. Hi, Smirky, Shinken, uh, Tina, I see Tina, Bizen. Hello, hello, Drebin. Um, hello, everybody. How's it going today? So we're, sh I see you too, Shiro. I see you. Hello. And uh, welcome. Thank you for being here. So today is the episode two of Streamer Strategies with a focus on collaboration. So... Let me get into the show because, uh, hello, I botched that intro, but that's all right. We're going to let the stars shine next. Let me bring on my incredible, talented, amazing, stu stupendous superstars of guests today and uh, introduce everyone now. Um, so, hi, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> my name is Ash and I just started streaming today. How are you? <laughs> I oh, always forgot to speak, unmute but then myself. I was muted. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I, was like, I now I forgot to unmute, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I should hit the button too." It's <gasps> it's a struggle. It's Streaming a struggle. is hard. Oh god, oh god. You know, and it's so funny. Before we went live chat, I was like, "You know, everything is going very smooth. Like everything is working." You know, it's just, it's too, something's too good. Something's too good. But you know what? Thanks for getting my back. Thank you for letting me know, everybody. So let's go around the room and introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about what we do on Twitch. And answer one question is, uh, is chili soup? Joy, could you go first? I'm going to go Joy, Pleasantly Twisted, then Meadow. I had hair in my mouth. <laughs> What's everyone? My name is Joy, but you could just call me Joy. I am a JRPG and fighting game streamer, and I just have a love for all games. What I focus on the most. Uh, what was the question about chili? <laughs> is chili soup? Is chili soup? Mm hmm No. Mm, interesting. It's not interesting okay there's I'm more well it depends on the chili because there's more like meat and beans and stuff like that than like broth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the only reason why there's broth is because the meat and the stuff you know boiled in it true okay okay i like that take i like that take pleasantly twisted please tell us a little bit about yourself and his chili soup Okay, so hi, I'm Pleasantly Twisted. I go by she, they pronouns. It always looks like I'm not looking at the camera. I promise you I am. I'm just, <laughs> it's all over the place. It's messy. It's more streamer strategies. How to get your camera set up. Uh, that's the trick. You don't. Uh, <laughs> I do variety content. I do mostly JRPGs and a lot of Metroidvanias and roguelikes. I have always lovingly and jokingly said with Joy, who I would love to collaborate with more often, that we are almost the same tiny nerdy black girl and that brings me immense amounts of joy. And yeah, if you like her content, you'll like my content because it's really similar, honestly speaking. And then Joy does fighting games, which she didn't mention because she's very good at them. But then where she does fighting games, I do challenge runs and speed runs because we both have a little void of pain that we need to entertain in our lives. Um, is chili soup i feel okay walk with me for a second okay this is hard because consider 
things like beer cheese soup exist and those aren't brothy those aren't brothy mm-hmm. and then and then we have things like minestrone soup which has broth but there's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. so i really do think it depends on the better more violent question is should chili have beans oh because that helps determine it because if it's just meat chili i can't yeah. call it like soup soup it's weird well no i think it's more soupy if it's just meat if you add the beans it becomes less soupy it's weird it's complicated i'm just gonna default to soup is delicious i love that i love that chili's delicious yeah 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 i love that i love that and you know what i went to the grocery store recently and i found that they are now canning and selling wendy's chili i don't know how everybody feels about that but i thought that that was interesting Oh man. Anyway, um that's my I'll tell y'all what I think about Chili after Meadow introduces themselves and says, "What do you do on Twitch and what kind of content create you create and what is Chili? Soup or not soup?" <laughs> Um, hi, uh, my name is Meadow. I'm so excited and also uh, admittedly very nervous to be here, but like in the good way where you can tell it's because you're really amped about something. Um, I'm a variety streamer. I've actually been on hiatus for quite a few weeks due to depression um, and talking really openly about mental health is something I'm pretty passionate about on my channel. My main categories are Sea of Thieves, ASMR, retro chatting, and I really like dark and macabre indie games, but uh, like goth without getting too horrific because i don't do like blood and violence on my yeah. channel yeah um and my channel is always hard for me to explain um i'm endeavoring to tell like a serial overarching story that has an interactive mystery and a focus on immersive world building and executing that concepts involved a lot of trial and error so it's still yeah. very much a production and development mm-hmm. but i would say that that like character based and story driven content defines who I am and what I'm creating more so than any one category I stream. Yeah. And I think passionately that chili is not soup. Oh. If anything, maybe it's a stew. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, all right. I like you know what? That's something that I didn't think about. I like that. So let me tell y'all where I got uh, where that question came from. When I went to Dragon Con, somebody walked up to me and they had like a board and they were surveying everybody that walked by them and I was like, "Ooh, that's a good question." And I think more people picked not a soup than a soup but for me i was like i don't think it's a soup because like i feel like it does have to have a broth but i like the idea of does it need to have beans i think it does so i don't know now i'm kind of split now i'm kind of split i don't know (laughs) well anyway yeah lentils yes oh my god i love me a good lentil soup too so yeah i love that i I love that or split Um, beef yes oh my god yes exactly exactly those are and those are very hearty so it's like i feel like even those can kind of like be borderline you know especially depending on what's in it but thanks for sharing your two cents thanks for letting everybody know what it is that you do here on twitch and i'm really excited to hear your perspective on the things that we're going to be talking about today which is collaboration and the reason why i wanted to do a show about collaboration today is because i feel like especially for broadcasters, there is a huge opportunity to sharpen our skills in terms of developing collaboration and collaborative efforts. And I feel like um, when we kind of like invest in these kinds of opportunities, we help lift each other up in ways that maybe um, we haven't focused on before because it's easy to go live and kind of be the star of the show. But I think it's... It, it there's a lot to say about bringing other people into your space and and um, showcasing other talents as well. So I'd love to hear your perspective on um, what collaboration looks like for each of you. And I'd like to go Meadow, Pleasantly Twisted, then Joy to answer this question. Yeah, um, I think you really hit the nail on the head already when you were talking about like uplifting each other. To me, collaboration looks like inviting someone into your offerings so that you can create something more than would be possible for you to make alone. I love that. I love that. Yeah, definitely bringing people in and and seeing what y'all could do together. I love that idea. Yeah. 
Should I just should I just start talking? Sure, or, yeah. Sorry, I don't know I, if you're gonna call on me or not. Oh yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll make sure to do that now. I'll make sure to no, do that. No, you're perfectly for fine. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. You have to forgive me because, in my true fashion, I am multitasking. So you have to repeat the question for me. Sure. It is. Um, what does collaboration look like to you? It's. I don't know how to put that into words because, like, what we're doing right now is collaboration. Yeah. And it looks like the gathering of people who have common goals, common ideas, and even just common fun times yeah. to make content and kind of plus it in a way that they can't do solo. Like, I mm -hmm. could run a show like this by myself, but mm -hmm. it just offers something a lot more with more voices and more people and more insights back and forth and even if they don't always combine well or agree it mm -hmm. still is good to have all that variety on the table because now you're getting all those different perspectives to really chew on it and say huh how do i want this to apply to me so yeah, yeah. collaboration i don't want to make it sound like it's a cop-out but it looks kind of like what we're doing right now just the reaching out the talking and the establishing that hey this is something that we are all passionate about so let's talk about it Gotcha, gotcha. And Joy, what do you think? Do you do you agree with that, or do you feel like it looks a little bit something different for you? Uh, talk shows and stuff like this. Well, others see like, hey, you want to play a game with me on stream? And then it's like, it really depends on what it looks for you. And I think. I think it's a collaboration if it's just not you. Like reg regardless if the other person is not streaming at the same time or whatever, it's like, it's not an only you show. So it's, you're sharing your space with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it, it does, I think people hear the word collaboration. They think it's like this big massive thing where it can literally just be like, I'm playing a video game with my friend. You know, that's a really good point. I think that that, um... You know, because I feel like a lot of times people feel like it has to be like a production with other people, other streamers. But I like the idea of collaboration can also be with your own community. You know, it could be with people that you hang out with every day. It doesn't necessarily have to be like everybody has like a huge space in the spotlight. Like it's whatever feels comfortable for you. So I really like that point. And um I like what you were saying earlier, Meadow, about bringing people into your space, because I feel like, you know, you have to be able to find the right people to collaborate or even the right reasons to collaborate. So with that being said, what would be a reason you would choose to collaborate with someone else? And um, I'm going to go Pleasantly Twisted, Meadow, then Curious Joy. I was wondering if there was going to be a setup where it's like, am I always the middle person? But, <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think because I've done so many different iterations of collaboration and Joy does bring up a really good point about it being like, you can do it with your community, like polls and voting and just making it a thing where I know you've done that before, Ash, where you'll just ask people straight up, Hey, what game do we want to play next? And it makes people feel like they have more of a voice and involvement. Um, and it feels more connected because now you're creating content that you're interested in and they're interested in seeing you do the content. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I'm just messy today, I suppose, because I think about these things, but I don't think about these things. I just think about the end product of it being something fun for everybody to be involved in and something that everyone's engaged in. And so like looking at stuff to collaborate on, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I like doing stuff like this. Yeah. I kind of like collaborating on games more, though. Gotcha. I like having a good time with my friendos. Yeah. Like, later today, I'm going to go smack monsters with people, and I'm really looking forward to it. But I feel like, like that kind of show here on Twitch where it's like, because like recently, right? I remember I watched it was like you, Adrian, J-Rock and a bunch of really awesome people just kind of vibing while you all were playing, you know, uh, I think it was like a first person shooter or something like that that I saw you all oh, doing. It was Tower Unite. The entire yes. thing was a mess. It was great. Tower Unite. Yeah. Which is, uh, whew, that's a really great experience. But 
Things like that where it's like, okay, well, do I want it to be like a cool hangout where we're celebrating somebody's like birthday, for example, or chilling or, you know, just, you know, shooting the breeze or, you know, more structured where it's like, because I know you've done a lot of really awesome things, you know, even in the industry space where we're setting up like events like, you know, um, Juneteenth, like the speed running stuff we did for Juneteenth and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I know like for you, I have seen you do like some really amazing shows. So maybe um, any kind of, of thoughts about like that kind of stuff that you've done. Um, There's a lot of stuff that goes into it and there's a lot of planning and a lot of effort and energy and time. So if you're looking to collaborate with others in any capacity, be ready to have some time set aside to even just get things up and running. Yeah. Like I make jokes about it, but part of the reason that I find myself not collaborating as much as I want to with people is because time is not infinite and you're going to need it to plan, to set up, to block the time, to make sure that y'all can collaborate like what happens when you all get together and you set a date and then an emergency happens right or what happens when just your timelines don't set up correctly like there's people i want to collaborate with that are in uk time yeah so yeah. there's no winning scenario because one of us is going to have to be up at witching hours yeah and yeah. that's something you have to work with and trying to figure out okay how do we compensate how do we collaborate and make it so that it feels fair for all people involved So those are things that you really need to think about. And then you kind of mentioned this uh, behind the scenes a little bit, Ash, the work with putting together things like run of shows, making sure everyone has the information that they need, making sure everyone is where they need to be. I asked earlier, hey, I only did guest star once, so where do I need to be? And having those answers readily available so that things can stay on track. Yeah. Because it's, it's really much more time intensive and planning intensive than people realize. It's not as easy as just dropping off a dm to meadow and being like hey you want to play video games together yep yep maybe it works that way possibly it might work that way but for something that you want to have a little bit more polish on or something you want to make more consistent kind of like this series being a monthly thing you have to have that commitment and that time dedication to make sure that it works oh man i am so happy you brought that up that is not even something that was like on my run a show document is time and that is a humongous factor in doing stuff like that you know what i think i might speak a little bit more on that separately after i hear the answers from um you know my other guests here but i definitely want to piggyback off of some of the things that you just said there so meadow could you please tell me um you know what are reasons you choose to collaborate with others yeah um Honestly, I think collaboration is probably the single most exciting aspect of being on Twitch for me. Um, So this is the question of the things that you outlined on that run of show that I got the most excited about. And I 100% am calling myself out on the fact that I'm going to read from notes here because there was so much I was excited to mention. So one big reason is obviously just expanding your reach and, and the reach of your guests. You're sharing community and introducing each other to each other's communities and people that might not otherwise find you or them. Mm -hmm. you're adding variety um there's so much more breadth in what other people can bring to your content even in a conversation like this having multiple voices we're all going to have different experiences to draw on different opinions to bring to the table and also the kinds of content like i got invited to like sea of thieves is one of my main categories now Mm -hmm. didn't used to be at all i got invited into a tournament that was pairing up players with very little experience with players who had a ton of experience So I was one of those players that had under 100 hours in the game, really hadn't played, ended up falling in love with it. And if it hadn't been for someone organizing that collaboration and me being willing to jump into something like that, I wouldn't have discovered something that's now one of my main categories. Um, Also out of necessity, (laughs) because I do D&D collaboration and you can't have the D&D campaign without working with other people. Mm -hmm. And some of like things I found the most exciting that I've experienced on Twitch, like I produced a live reading of a Shakespeare production. Obviously, if I write a new part, that's not very exciting. (laughs) Like having a bunch of different streamers come together, having a streamer play music to go with that, like all of those things enhanced it so much. Yeah. Um, And then a really big thing I want to touch on, I know I'm saying a lot on this, but I think that it's really huge for our mental health and for preventing burnout. Like I mentioned when I introduced myself, I've been on hiatus for several weeks. I wasn't even planning to go on hiatus for that long but I've been in a really, really deep depression and it's been so hard to get myself to want to turn on a camera and be on stream. 
And when you asked me to do this, it's, oh, shoot, I forgot to turn my alert box off. That's no, so that's fine. That's cool. I'm sorry. That's all right. I <laughs> love it. it. Please, <laughs> everyone go and follow these amazing <laughs> human any, beings. Do yeah. it right now. If it's any interjection while you're doing that, seeing the alert went off just brought me the most joy because I was like, people are watching and are like, oh, I like this person. I'm going to go follow oh, them. Yes. Um, that, that makes you. me happy. I yes. love that for you. Please. Um, but yeah, just... Uh, it's been true for me so many times because honestly, I've struggled with depression on and off continually throughout my journey with streaming. And so many times, like ever since Guest Star was introduced, coming together with other streamers to do something as a group really helps to like empower each other and to lift a little bit of that weight and the anxiety that can surround coming on stream if you've been having a hard time. Like also I have really severe ADHD and the extrinsic motivation when there's other people involved, if I set up a collab and I have to show up for other people, mm -hmm. then that extra pressure is actually really helpful to me. And it's the same with this. Like this is the most organized and prepped for stream I've been in forever because I know there's other people involved and that really helps to motivate me. So yeah. I think just because burnout and mental health are things that affect all streamers so much and content creators in general, being able to use collaboration as a tool to move through that is really powerful. Wow. I, man, I am very, very, like, I love everything that you, I'm very moved by some of the things that you said too. Like, I want to, first of all, say thank you for being so open and uh, transparent about some of the struggles you're facing today, because I feel like, you know, when we have somebody that is allowed to be open like that and connect with other people who might be dealing with a similar thing, it is empowering to know that you're not alone and that you can deal with it kind of like together, you know? And um, so thank you for sharing all of those amazing, um, you know, pieces of you and, and thoughts and advice. And I really love all of the things that you brought up like that. I didn't even think about like music collaboration, like Dungeons and Dragons collaboration, a freaking Shakespeare, like, you have no idea how cool that is, like being able to, um, you know, perform pieces like that, because I do feel like there should be more of a space like that here on Twitch where people are doing like theatrical kind of ideas or performances and stuff like that. And it goes to show the creativity and the things that we can learn from others through collaborative efforts. And I love the thing that you brought up with Sea of Thieves and not being exposed to something and then being exposed to it and finding out oh my God, this is something that I actually really love. You know, that that is really cool. So I feel like it's awesome to see how much it's opening up your world and, um, you know, allowing you to experience new things and then share those things with others. So thank you for doing that. That was really cool. Um, Joy, what does it look like for you? Um, what are reasons you choose to collaborate with other creators? Okay, so I have a few things to say. I have the cool things to say, and then I have the not so cool things to say. Okay. Because as cool and like great as collaboration is, there are certain things that people should be super aware about when it comes to yeah. collaboration that I mm -hmm. want to make sure I share because it's things that I either faced or like just, it's just not everything sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the reasons why I choose to collab is I definitely have a relationship with the people that I choose to collab with because I even when you tweeted it out and people are like I'm an introvert I don't know how to reach out to people uh people think I'm not an introvert but most of the time I'm staring at a wall when I'm talking so it's a lot easier to talk to myself uh so it is hard to like reach out to people and stuff like that so I definitely either spend time in people's streams for a while I lurk and then I just start gradually start talking to people. Then I'm like, hey, it looks like we can mesh well. And so we play the same games. Let's try and do that. Or like, let's do everything like I do anything. Cause like even like us, Ash, like we have similarities where we like, you know, Nintendo and retro and stuff like that. But like in a perfect world, people would never see like us like being friends or something like that because we don't, we are in the same circle, but then we are at the same time. And so it's like, it really depends on how you connect with the person before yeah. I decide to collab with somebody. That's why I was like, whenever you ask, I'll do it because I love Ash. She's great. <laughs> like, you know, um, but then there's like these other sides of collaboration where 
people are so honed in into doing it for visibility for like outreach and stuff like that where it's like i feel that streamers as a in a way this may come off as negative only shoot for collaborations and so i feel like there was always an advice that my mom had because when i first started doing youtube and everything like that i would always have like my friends i was with and my vlogs and stuff like that and she was like you need to make sure people remember whose channel it is you need yeah. to remember like who's who where they're coming from and like who is it is and so after that i started being really picky about who like how many times I brought people into my space. Yeah. Because then it made it seem like it was somebody else's world or like people come to you be like, oh, when are you playing games with so-and-so again? Or when are you doing right. this? And so you start getting overshadowed. So there are like the good things and the bad things about collaborating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so as an introvert, when people, there's more than four people, I just, I just stay quiet. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's like, I, I just don't say anything. Yeah. And so it's like, you always have to figure out how many people, and then like, especially like with Final Fantasy 14 at that time, people were like, let's do an alliance raid with like 30 people. I'm like, no, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> and it's not like, I don't, it's not that I don't like the people. It's just like, it, it's not as intimate and it's not such a good collaboration when you have like all of these different voices yeah you don't have time to shine on your side of the stream especially as an introvert you're quiet and so you're just sitting there while all these voices are going off you're like this is great content guys this is the best i am i'm here by myself <laughs> just listening this is amazing <laughs> um so yeah i wanted to point out like collaborations are great but there are certain things that you have to remember that it's your content it's your space you have to remember to balance out between when you invite people into your space and when you focus on yourself. Uh, and I am with Pleasantly Twisted on this. I think game collabs are the best collabs because as an introvert, I can't just have conversations all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I need to have something on screen. Yeah. Um, so it's, it just really depends on the person. But like, I just all really wanted to point out the fact that I always see so many people in this space just constantly saying like i need streamer friends i need to collab with people i need yeah. to do that and it's just like what about your own time to like make sure you do that so it's just like it's just weird yeah <laughs> i i want to piggyback one thing off of that too yeah because joy started to say it and i want to make sure that it's like ultimately stressed it is absolutely okay to be picky about who you collaborate with yeah it is not only okay it's probably more in the mandatory category because i said it in chat and i'll say it out loud having commonalities does not always auto equate to a good collaborative partner um, yeah people who have been in the wine cellar have seen this unfortunately unfold multiple times where we've had people who had one or two commonalities with me and they've hung out on my channel and they've done fun stuff and then as more time passed things got revealed and it's like oh oh, you can't be on my channel anymore, actually. And that's not even getting into like the nitty gritty of it. It's just the fact that the only commonality was something like, oh, we both like Soulsborne games. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Or, oh, we both like Monster Hunter. And that's it. Right. So definitely take what Joy said to the utmost degree, hang out in channels, lurk, get a feel for people, kind of see how they kind of, run their own channels because these people have to have their own personalities too. Yeah. And you have to have your personality. So right. it's about trying to understand how your personalities come together much more than just the content you want to create. Cause I know I can boot up monster hunter and get a full lobby. That's not a problem. I can go to the Capcom creator discord and say lobby's open and it's done. Right. But I don't know how those people play with me. Right. I know how I play Monster Hunter with Ash. I've done that before. Yeah. I have some ideas about how it would work with Joy. Neto, I don't mean this really, but I've met you maybe 20 minutes ago. So I have no idea how that's going to go with you. But there has to be an understanding that if I invite Ash and Joy to collaborate with me and not Meadow, that's nothing against Meadow. That's about me needing to kind of like test the waters, get to know, and we need to know each other first before I even can muster up the courage to just go be like, hey, do you want to play Monster Hunter with me? Right. I don't even know. If Meadow doesn't like that, now how do I look? Right, right, <laughs> right. You know, 
it's I'm so glad that you both spoke on this because literally the next question was how do you find the right person or people to collaborate with? And then there was going to be a second part to that question, what makes someone a good fit to collaborate, which we could definitely tackle those as two separate um, pieces of conversation. But you brought up some excellent points, all of you, about that, because I feel like if you're not doing it in a thoughtful manner, you're doing a disservice to all parties, right? You're doing a disservice to all parties. And like you were saying before, Joy, like, the whole Final Fantasy 14, a full 30 people in the party, everybody, everybody's voices in your ear. You can't be your best self and perform on camera as your best self if you're feeling overwhelmed or in a space that doesn't align with maybe some of your introverted qualities or some of the things that you would feel being like in a space comfortably. So, um, yeah, with that being the next question, how do you find the right person to collaborate with? Like, how, how does that go? Joy, I'll go to Joy, um, Pleasantly Twisted, then Meadow. Uh, before I had that issue of, you like this game. Okay, cool. Let's let's hang out and play. And then after a while, you're like, oh, we don't, we don't connect at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, but then and so after like i start getting myself into these situations i just started being a lot more picky with like when it's time for me to actually start me like messaging people or like be like hey do you want to play um like midna baby who's in your chat now like i knew her for a year before we actually got together and played a game together um so it wasn't like an instant thing and then we met in person in a Japanese airport because we went to Japan together. Oh, <laughs> and now oh. she's like my best friend. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and so it's like after a while, I like felt like I needed to get to know these people because I've been in a lot of circumstances on my own personal thing where it's like all these connections that I make just because we have one interest does not mean we are like connected in a way and there's right. been like fallouts and then there's been like all this stuff like that and it just makes everything more complicated and then like i mentioned like with like ash is like we have similarities but then we're also completely different but then as human beings we vibe together so yeah. that's why it's it's easier for us to like talk it's like oh i would never imagine like joy and ash but then we got to hang out in the, in the super nintendo world and it's like no sometimes you can have barely any interest in people like like same interest but you connect as just humans yeah <laughs> so it's just like it's it really depends and it just takes time to do like the research and stuff like that and people just get so overshadowed with like you like the same game i do oh my god and we like that too we must play this game right now we must do this right now we must do this this is like no <laughs> no we mustn't <laughs> let's slow down and let's so slow. yeah right yeah and so I just started just being a lot more picky because of like, but it all comes with like, you have to make the mistakes in order to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like everybody seeing other people's mistakes is either making them not want to collab with other people or wanting them to collab, which is now making it very aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just really important to just start dabbling in like different communities and just finding people for people versus like interest mm -hmm. um because i always have this comment said to me where it's like i chat in a twitch chat and people are like joy you're everywhere i was like well yeah i have multiple interests and just because it's not like a game that like i'm focused on i like the person right <laughs> and so it's like like i connect with the person and so I, like i end up being in places it's like and plus in order for you to know that I'm everywhere, you have to be where I am. That means these people are cool people, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I have been told that myself too, but exactly like you said, <laughs> we're multifaceted human beings. We like many different things, you know? Yeah. Well. But yeah, I just, I just feel like I think you have to probably develop an offline relationship before yes. quickly adapting it to an online collaboration relationship. Like even October, I'm finally going to play with a friend that I've known for over a year. So it's like, I've definitely done the homework to make sure yeah, <laughs> that this is going to be something where as soon as I go live, it's not like awkward and it's not unconnected and stuff like that. Yeah. And 
Yeah, and now I play games that Midna makes me play. We're going through Boulder's Gate. I do have my instances where my introvertness is like, there's four of us, and so I get quiet. But then yesterday I had my revenge, and so I caused <laughs> chaos. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it's, it's nice to like, have that support. A... Yeah, and it's like, I, I like everybody that's in our group, but then like sometimes there are days where like I get quiet, and there's sometimes that some days or other people get quiet because we all understand but being quiet like in like the actual voice chat does not mean like it's wrong yeah because we have our own things going on like we all have our own streams at the happening at the same time so just because we're not talking to each other at for like five minutes does not mean it's bad but that comes with the territory of you have to develop your own stuff first yeah because if you're so focused on the collaboration you can't entertain your own stream while the other people are quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I love that. I love, you know what I always say, like some of my best friendships, I feel like I could be in the same room with this person and never say a word. And it just feels like we had an awesome day together. Like that's like some of my ways that I like to spend with people like outside of like, you know, internet space or whatever. But I totally feel you on that. Just because you're quiet, like, doesn't mean that you're not enjoying the space being around the other people. So I feel you yeah. on that. Yeah. I think the best video I have is, I think I hung out with Jahara for the first time. And I was like, we were like in the hotel room and I was on my phone in her couch, just <laughs> scrolling down, <laughs> just not talking. We were talking to each other. We we're just both on our phones. And all of a sudden she's like, hey, Joy, how's your pizza? <laughs> but it's like that's you just gotta be comfortable with quiet and yeah yeah we're all i think there's more introverts than extroverts so yeah. it's just that understanding but you won't know that until you get to know the person yeah and i think that's the key takeaway here is like getting to know the people before you decide to collaborate um i know you shared a lot pleasantly twisted with us about how to find the right person is there anything else that you want to share about that point so I kind of wanted to just, first and foremost, I agree with everything that Joy said and that offline relationship building is going to be critical to a lot of it because kind of the same idea, if you just go rushing head first into the collaboration part, that's how you wind up in these really weird and awkward situations where you're just like, oh, this isn't going the way I want it to at all. And I am extremely extroverted. Like I will talk to you about a dust mite if you let me, and I'll talk to you about it for the next two and a half hours. And they're laughing because they've seen me do stuff like that on my channel where I'm just like, it starts with a conversation about chapstick and it's two hours later and we might still be talking about the chapstick or we might be somehow delving into how chapstick gets made. I don't know. We just talk, but like, you have to also understand your own personality and how it works with other people. This way you can kind of help understand what kind of collaboration you're looking for. I am very chatty. I will talk your ear off. I might be extremely overwhelming to an introvert that's just like, hey, I'm just here to press buttons and that's all they want to do. So you have to think about those kinds of things and make sure that you're really, really, really connected and on the same page about your collaboration work. And the multifaceted part, is probably my favorite part of all of this because a lot of people don't know as much as I talk, I am extroverted when I need to be, but then when I'm off camera and whatnot, I'm actually much more introverted. I am kind of just, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to eat my dumplings and just kind of vibe on my pal kitty. I'll talk to y'all a little bit later type of thing. And I just hang out and I'm always around online, but even in channels, I'm a huge lurker. So yeah. I'll come in. I'm just like, hey, how's everyone doing? I hope you're all having a great day. And then you will not see me for the next three hours. Yeah. And people are just like, I've had people message me and say, is everything OK? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm everything's fine. Well, you're just not that chatty. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sometimes I'm quiet. <laughs> sometimes I like not talking because yeah. I want to just enjoy the content I'm watching and seeing what they're doing and watching them play this game and it's great yeah. but then you also have to have your unhinged moments because that's how people get to know how your content is ran um one of my favorite collaborations to do is with j-rock the god and insert person here yeah because it's always a mess and no one is ever prepared for that <laughs> ever ever there's been nights where i'll get with them and we'll play gunfire reborn the last time me him and jason sully played it if you're familiar with him i had a brick weapon and it was object 
chaos, just absolutely nonsense because I was actually jacked in and hitting my headshots and I was like, she's that girl. I'm gonna murder everybody. And I just, every now and again, would you just hear me yell bricks? And it was me throwing a brick. My character's <laughs> weapon was a brick. Wow. If you've been in my channel, you do not understand how on point and funny that is. I just threw bricks for the entire match. And even J-Rock at one point was like, we're not letting you have a brick anymore. And I was like, if the game says I have a brick, then I know what my job <laughs> is. Bricks. But that's, but those are the facets of people's personalities that you're not going to get if you're not willing to go out and explore and right. have those offline combos and pay attention to how they talk. How I present myself on Twitter is very different than how I present myself on stream. So people go in thinking they're going to collaborate with Twitter, Vanessa. And then all of a sudden they're collaborating with like Bloodborne, Vanessa. Yeah. And they're like, oh this isn't what I expected. And it's like, yeah, because again, we are multifaceted. Yeah. Very unique people with unique interests and in things. Joy and I bond on things like Final Fantasy. It's mostly when I drag Final Fantasy 8, but I at least make the drags funny. I at least make the drags funny. Uh <laughs> I like Final Fantasy 8. <laughs> I mean, I, I've thought about starting chaos in your chat, Ash, but I decided not to. I was like, it's your first time playing six, so I'm gonna just sit back here and drink my water. Oh, what an emotional roller coaster it's been. <laughs> but nonetheless, but those are most of everything that Joy said, I 100% agree with. And I think that it is critical that you get to know the people you want to collaborate with much more than what the content is you want to collaborate on. Yeah. You can get there once you figure out how people mesh with you and then what you want to do and then even yeah. see if they're interested in doing it because people forget it has to be kind of a mutual thing like yeah yeah all parties have to be kind of interested in wanting to do it yeah and i think that's a really really great point because the thing is is like because a lot of us only know each other through the internet right like we don't i i have been lucky to have met you know joy and meadow in the past and you know like it's it is it is really really difficult sometimes navigating how do i how do i talk to somebody that i've never met before how do i know how to broach this conversation you know and especially in a space where sometimes feel like people feel like oh like what what is it that they want from me you know like you know what i'm saying like that's why i feel like developing that relationship is paramount because you know then there's less of that you know this person just wants to be a part of my space because of like something rather than actually talking to me because they like me as a person you know so i think that that's Really, really, really good points. And Meadow, what do you have to share about how do you find the right person or people to collaborate with? Yeah, um, I really agree so much with what's been said about needing to have that connection in advance, especially there's so many things that can come up in gameplay where if you don't know somebody's style in that kind of a game, you may or may not actually mesh when you're playing. And then there's also just considerations about who you are on stream. So for example, I've learned all this stuff from trial and error. I've jumped into a bunch of times sailing in Sea of Thieves with someone that I actually should have gotten to know more offline or outside of the stream before. And one thing that's like a hallmark for me in that game, I'm not especially good at it. So like what I'm showing is not like, this is the most amazing PVP. Instead, I'm demonstrating like, hey, here's how I'm having fun with PVP, getting horribly sunk and then like learning from it and like trying again. So somebody who gets really sour after a PVP round because they just want to win and they're so upset when they don't. Yeah, yeah. Not vibe well at all with like the kind of energy that I'm trying to create and like the kind of example I'm trying to set in that community. And I've had that happen because right. I didn't really figure out like, hey, let's play together when I'm not streaming and see how we vibe. Um, and even things as simple as like, I have some friends that I love to play with offline, but we're not going to play together on my stream because they curse up a storm and they can't help it. And like, that's totally cool. I actually do that when I'm not streaming, but I'm really good at turning that off when I'm live. And I don't like to have cussing on my channel. Um, I can actually speak to something though that's the inverse of all this. I brought a real life friend, an actor friend into a D&D collaboration and had it go terribly. So I think it's important to also recognize, like, I think um, 
it was PT that said this and really hit the nail on the head for me. We're like, we're different people in different spaces. So this person knows me really well from like hanging out in real life, uh, helping each other with like self tapes and like reading scenes together, having a game night together. We've done all those things and it felt like we had that foundation, but then trying to throw them into streaming when they're not a streamer, uh, it turned out that this was not a great space for them. They were uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable. They did things with their tech setup at the last minute that I was like, how do you not know? Like, don't know. This is disastrous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Like, this is not their usual space. And the way they responded, and it was very different from how I imagined it would be. So there's a lot of considering just like, what context do you know this person in? And does it translate to the kind of collaboration that you're hoping to do? I think one other thing that didn't get mentioned that I wanted to touch on too is just in terms of long-term collaborations. Like mm -hmm. I really like that we've been emphasizing things like getting together and playing a game because I think that's one of the most like easy kinds of collaboration to get into, one of the most helpful and agreeable and like natural fit for this platform. Um, but like if you do want to do something like create a long-term D&D campaign where you're collaborating with people repeatedly or do a show where you guys are co-hosts, then a lot more things about where your boundaries are in a creative exchange are going to come up, where your boundaries are on a collaboration where you're having to share workload over a long time and handle different parts of like managing a show. And I think it's really important because I've learned this through trial and error with those types of collabs to really navigate what you're going to be able to accept over the long term, because I've been in that kind of situation where I was working on a long-term collab with someone invited in a third party. And I was so invested in this long-term collab that I wasn't really noticing some of our dynamics or things that were a little bit off. And then having that third party there gave me someone to point out things like, Hey, it seems like you're doing more than your share of work or like, Hey, <laughs> kind of seems like this person didn't even say thank you for like anything that you put together for this. And just really being aware of that because um, I think this is true, like in things that go beyond streaming and beyond creative ventures, like in business ventures together or anything where you work together, but it's really easy when you're very enthusiastic and passionate about a project to lose sight of your own boundaries in it and like what's fair and reasonable from everyone involved. So just be aware if like a long-term collaboration is something you're excited about, it can be really rewarding because just like with the short-term ones, like with a show like this, you can do more by having three different people at the table sharing their perspectives as opposed to just one person sharing their opinions on collaboration. Um, and it's the same in like the long term that you can cover more bases and like build something bigger together. But you're signing on to get invested in an ongoing relationship. And just like any long term relationship, like a long term friendship or like a long term business partnership, you really want to make sure you know who you're getting involved in that with or you can invest a lot of work into a collab that won't pay off down the line. Wow. I love everything that you just said. It was so thoughtful. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, I think that sometimes for me even, you know, I forget certain boundaries of like workload and things like that because I'm the person that's like, well, I got to make sure I have everything done and I got to make sure I'm on time and I got to make sure like, you know what I'm saying? There's some people who might not share that same work ethic and, you know, there could be room there for things to get taken advantage of. So I'm glad that you brought that up as a point. And I think it is something that's important to think about when you're finding the right person to collaborate with is like, does this person share the same work ethic? Does this person have the same ideals? Is this person going to understand like some of my boundaries, like what you expressed with like vulgarity and things like that? Like I'm the same, you know, on stream. No, none of that. I do not curse. Like the most you'll get out of me is like, oh, sugar, or honey, iced tea or something like that, you know, <laughs> but but offline, I'm from New York. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the explicatives fly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But yeah, like I, think I, I might I, be the only one that's like doesn't curse offline, but then also doesn't curse offline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like beep, beep. <laughs> 
it's just this just you know it's just how it is it's just how it is also i just want to say thank you to savannah for subscribing three months tier one in advance and thank you meadow for the gifted sub and thank you noodle beef noodle for the raid noodle welcome in everybody it's so great to see you all thank you thank you thank you we're talk. we are here um, talking about collaboration for our streamer strategy show with my wonderful um, hosts here. And uh, it's really nice to see you. Welcome on in, Raiders. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing all of those really thoughtful um, things that you have learned through your path. And um, I got to say, even for this, you know, when I do this show, how do I find the right people, right? Like, for me, it's... Is this person, has this person had experience talking about whatever the topic is that we've talked about, like we're going to talk about? And how are they going to mesh with the other guests? And like, how do I set up that conversation? And for me to make this easier on the people that I'm collaborating with, I make sure to do the heavy lifting. Like I write the run of show, tell you exactly how it's going to be set up so that there's no su surprises. You know what you're walking into and it's as easy as, as it can be for you to come in and just share your expertise and your thoughts and make it fun. So that way it's like seamless, you know, that's how I go about the collaborative effort um, when I'm doing a show like this. So Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your thoughts about that. I don't know if um, we want to talk about what makes somebody a good fit to collaborate. Is that like a conversation that we want to have? Like everybody has some things to share about that. Um, yeah. OK, cool, cool. All right. Um, well, I'm going to go meadow, then joy, then pleasantly twisted on what makes someone a good fit to collaborate with you. If it's okay, I'd really like to start by just piggybacking off what you shared about the way that you set up this collab, because this is sort of jumping back to the earlier question of reasons to collaborate with people. But a big reason is that you learn from other streamers processes, especially if you're a guest in someone's collab, because I've done interview series before and I've never put together a run of show or done as many like prior to the stream checking in with people like this is a dream collab because Ash has taken very good care of us and made us really well prepared oh, and seeing the process that you go through to get to this point is something that I learned a lot from um and like I, I know it sounds really cheesy but uh I promise I'm not just like blowing hot air it really is true that uh you've exemplified in this collab a lot of the things that I would say are what makes somebody good to collab with. They're reliable, they're considerate, um, they're thoughtful. Um, and I think an important thing too is that I have to respect the person that I'm gonna collaborate with and enjoy their content. Because if I don't think that their content is really great or think that they are, you know, a person a person with good values, you know, that gives me a good feeling to be around, why the heck would I collaborate with them? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. I really just, I, that means a lot to me. Um, <laughs> they, don't make me cry on stream. Um, okay, well, <laughs> um, Joy, what makes someone a good fit to collaborate? No, seriously, thank you, Meadow. That was really nice. And I, I really want to make this as easy and fun for everybody and, and uh, set a good trend. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, I think we kind of touched on what makes someone a good fit for collaboration. Like for me personally, it's someone that understands when if I go quiet, it's not because I hate you. I always get this thing where it's like, does Joy hate me? Does Joy not like me? And I'm like, I just don't want to talk. But it's not because like I don't like you. It's because I'm just like, I'm in a position where I'm not used to because as I mentioned, I'm talking to a wall majority of the time. So it's just like, there has to be the understanding of everybody's like, um, like how they feel and how they collaborate because there are some people that I, I adore and admire that can't stand quiet. Mm -hmm. And so like, though I like them as a person and will hang out with them like off stream, I don't want to like be in that position where I feel like I'm always forced to talk. So it's yeah. like, that's the situation for me where it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, we can hang out and do all this stuff. You're great, but don't take offense if I don't ask you to hang out with me on stream because I want to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so it's like, cause also those quiet times give you the opportunity to connect with the people that hang out in your chat and stuff like that. So it's like, you don't want to have to always feel forced to be in an uncomfortable situation. It has nothing to do with the person. Like the person's not terrible. It's just like, 
you have to make sure that each person can respect the boundaries of that and so me personally i would have to make sure that it's someone that understands like me i get really quiet really fast <laughs> so, no, i um, think i think that that's an important point to make though because for each person there's going to be different things that dictate what makes a good fit for collaboration so i i appreciate the fact that sometimes maybe you need to have like that ebb and flow of on and off on and off you know what i mean that that that's um that's really insightful because i'm sure other people feel the same way yeah and then there was another thing that popped in my head when we were talking that has nothing to do with a good fit, but it's kind of back to like what makes you like what collaboration means to you. And I also wanted to point out the fact that there's also a way to collaborate with people that have nothing to do with being guests on stream. Um, like my closest com like creator friends, we literally bounce ideas off of each other, but then like we make we end up making the content for like our own stuff where it's like hey i just edit this video can you check this out for a second does this look good it was like there's like different type of collaborations versus the like more straightforward but i like i do a lot more content collaborations in a sense where it's like hey i, I have this idea does this sound stupid to you or does it sound great and so it's just like that's another form of collaboration that a lot of people don't realize is super beneficial oh my god that's an excellent point like seriously i didn't even think about that like things that are not to do with streaming like hey i took this photo of this cosplay does this cosplay look good or janky you know what i'm saying like those are definitely forms of collaborative efforts like asking people for advice or you know maybe asking for their expertise if they're like an expert on something else like if i have a friend that's really big into tiktok like hey how do i break into that space or you know like what can i do to learn from you that's a really really awesome point and, and i'm glad that you brought that up um pleasantly twisted do you have any thoughts on what makes someone a good fit to collaborate with you uh, this is going to be one of my more, I might get a little cranky, but it's not towards anyone's commentary. Um, if you are trying to collaborate with me and you're not a team player, you cannot collaborate with me. Yeah. You cannot do it. I will not let you do it because I have kind of, <clears throat> this is like the dark side of things a little bit. When it comes to collaboration, what I've noticed is that there's this trend of people who want to collaborate with you and want to work with you but then they want to overpower you. They want to talk over you. They want to take over your show. They want to take over your channel. You can't do that because the idea about it is that we are all working together. It would be like us doing this panel right now and one of us has to constantly interrupt, constantly talk over another person, constantly got to get their piece in, constantly got to add a different pieces and bits into it. We're all here on the same team. We're all here doing the same thing and we're all working towards the same goal which is to help educate on how to collaborate with people. You, there's no competition. There's no first place for best person with advice. We are all on the same playing field. So chill out, stop, <laughs> mellow. We have to get into that mindset about stuff. And I've seen those collaborations happen where people are like, hey, let's play games together. And someone wants to walk in and try to take over the entire game. And it's like, no, that's not... First of all, that's not what we agreed upon. It's one thing if you want to do a collaboration where it's going to be a little bit more of one person is the focus and the other one is kind of like curating and moving it along. We did that a little bit with interviews for GDQ, where as the interviewer, it's the interviewee's show. I don't have to talk a whole lot and I respect that boundary and I give them space and I help them shine. But that was understood and discussed beforehand. This way it doesn't feel like it is just one person talking. No, that's intentional because we are interviewing them. We want to know about them. You don't need to know about me. I host a GDQ. That's all you need to know about. But there are people who will try to use collaboration as a means to kind of bully their way to the top. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of stuff that I'm just not going to deal with. You have to be a team player. You have to be willing to ask questions. You have to be willing to engage. You have to be willing to say, hey, I don't know what's going on with this particular piece right here. Um, can you clarify that? rather than waiting till you go live to maybe possibly muscle your way through it and then mess up and now everyone's content is suffering because of it because you were afraid you were going to be embarrassed no be embarrassed ask the question i don't know where i'm supposed to be where what are we doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's going on 
how do you want me to execute on this? Hey, these instructions you gave me, they're not clear. Yeah. So it has to be team player stuff. It has to be everyone is here to win and get something out of it. And it's beneficial to all parties. People who want to collaborate with you just to uplift themselves, I don't collaborate with them. Like, yeah. I just won't do it. I yeah. won't do it because you are trying to overtake my work and my content for your own personal gain. Right, right. I think that's a really good point, especially the team aspect of it, because I feel like the best collaborations really do feel like everybody wants to work together and uplift each other and be like, you know, figuring out like how to make each other shine. Like those to me always seem like the best collaborations. Um, and I feel like asking questions. By Meadow's giant mug. Oh my God, the mug. I know I was peeping that early. I was like, wait a minute. That mug looks perfect for uh, soup, <laughs> chili soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, I love that. I love that mug. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, asking the questions definitely like, because if you have a question to ask, I guarantee you somebody else in the group has the same question, you know? So I definitely fully understand the stuff that you're saying there. And thank you for sharing that that thoughtful advice and, and um, your, your thoughts on that. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay, so here's a question I have. Um, I'm going to skip a couple of that's on the run of show if you're looking at the run of show, but... I have a, I, the side question I want to ask is, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Any pitfalls new creators make when attempting to collaborate? Like if somebody is brand new at collaborating and they didn't know how to start, but like you want to share like a piece of advice of like something that you should look out for or maybe something you should do or shouldn't do. Um, what's one piece of advice that you could give to a new person that has never collaborated and they want to collaborate? So I'm going to go Pleasantly Twisted, Meadow, then Curious Joy, if that's cool. Um, <clears throat> Know your content before you try to collaborate with someone else's content. We've kind of talked about it a lot here already, but I just want to reiterate it. Collaboration is fun. Collaboration is cool. And it can be a great time. But you need to be very firmly grounded in what your content is first before you can go out and attach yourself to somebody else's content. Mm. And I've seen a lot of times where people, because they look at it as a growth tool, that they want to run face first into, we play the same games, let's collaborate. Hey, you said some things that I like, let's collaborate. Hey, let's do all this stuff. I, I have lots and lots of horror stories from when I first got started and I was very activism driven and I was much more on leftist Twitch. I am not on leftist Twitch no more. I'm not, I'm not there no more. No, no, <laughs> I did not for me. But it really highlighted to me that just because people have commonalities doesn't mean it's gonna be a good fit. And I also didn't know what I wanted to do with my content, very bluntly speaking, because I was, I still am very much in the activism sphere. I still talk about stuff. I still talk about things that could be better and insert political facet here. But when I realized that that's not what I wanted my stream content to be, my friend circles made a massive shift because I looked at it and said, I don't wanna go live and talk about this. I don't feel like talking about some nonsense Trump did. Honestly, I hope Trump like stays off my timeline for eternity. I don't wanna talk about this mess. I don't wanna talk about yet another terrible racism thing. I don't feel like talking about all the ways that Republicans hate queers. When I go live, I wanna provide a space where we can just kick it and not think about how absolutely big of a dumpster fire the world is. Yeah. I wanna play Liza P and have fun and get angry at puppets. I wanna smack Malzenos in the mouth because I think they're cool, but also their armor is cooler and the fashion is always the end game. And when I made that realization, a lot of those collaboration efforts all of a sudden started to fade away too. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, well, we figured you would want to talk about that. I don't. I don't. But I had to ground myself. That wasn't their fault. That was my fault because I jumped face first into it. So yeah, my biggest thing I would say to people, know what your content is before you try to append to somebody else's content. Because okay. that's how you wind up getting burnt out, getting tired, yeah. getting frustrated that you feel like your stream isn't going anywhere 
and then you feel like you've done a bunch of stuff to no avail yeah yeah it's kind of a similar boat to feeling like you're pigeonholed into like one game or one category right like people shouldn't just automatically assume that you're always going to be about one thing or have one thing to say or one thing to speak on so I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. Meadow, what do you have to say? Like one piece of advice for like somebody newly getting into collaboration? Yeah. Um, well, when you mentioned pitfalls, I don't know about pitfalls that like the average new creator makes, but I know about a lot of pitfalls um, that I've come up against and mistakes I've made. So I think some of the biggest things I've learned is that you have to allow enough space around collabs um, for your preparation to uh like you don't want to commit to collabs that are putting unreasonable pressure on you you want to be yeah. clear up front like one of the things i've loved so much about listening to pt speak and like getting to know them through this interaction is um if you don't mind me saying so you strike me as someone who's very like grounded in who you are and with a really strong sense of boundaries and that's yeah. something like i think a lot of us figure out our boundaries as we go in a space like streaming and it's come up for me so much with collabs so i think just like having that advanced communication allowing enough space around the collab to do things like get to know somebody offline or playing the game together when you're not live all these things we've already touched on being really clear about what your collaborators can expect from you and what you expect from them um and is always also taking that like space to figure out your tech in advance and being ready with the backup plan when that falls through or when someone doesn't show up. Um, like everyone said, there's just so much work and preparation that goes into these things. And I know sometimes I've put a lot of pressure on myself. Like really recently, I would say the weakest episode I've ever had of this series of Woman Boost Wednesday interviews I do with non-male identifying creators was one I did during July when I was going through a big, personal tragedy and I had stuff specifically to do with that incident that I had to take care of in my real life that morning. And then I had an important business meeting that afternoon. And then after that, I tried to have my usual like interview session later that day. I ended up apologizing, even though people were like super kind and understanding because I picked kind people that were just like lovely to have on my channel. I still ended up apologizing to them after because I was like, you know what? I didn't set this up in a way that allowed me to really be at my best and be here for you and be a really good and thoughtful host to you because I was trying to do too many things and just didn't leave enough space around this collab, both for me to show up for them and be prepared and also for myself and to like take care of myself so I can show up in the way that I need to, to be a good host. Mm -hmm. So I think just like putting that room around things is the main advice I would give. I definitely appreciate that. And I even have to take that advice, honestly, because I definitely am the person that puts a ton of pressure on myself to make sure, is everything working right? Is everybody prepared? Um, did I give everyone enough time? Like, did I set this up? Does it look professional? You know, I definitely have gone through some of the things that you're talking about there. So um, that's advice for me, too. So thank you for sharing that. Joy, do you have any thoughts on, um, you know, one piece of advice you'd give for new collaborators or any pitfalls you'd want someone to avoid if they're newly collaborating? Uh, when I say these things, I don't mean it in a mean way. I want to start that off. <laughs> uh, however, there are things that I see on the social media accounts that I think will probably not be the best way to approach doing collabs. Yeah, yeah. And that is the constant asking for people to collab in a public fashion. It's, I'm looking for friends to collab with. What should we do? Blah, blah, blah. Or going into people's streams and being like, hey, we should play. Like putting the person that's live at the time of pressure on them where it's like, oh yeah, sure, let's play. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like I do that with friends that I've known for years, but then like I swap it into a DM, but it's just like, it's like one of those things. But I feel like I constantly see people always like, I don't have a lot of, you know, people in this space. So I'm going to just constantly only tweet out that I'm looking for collaborations versus like probably actually going to find the specific people in the ways that everybody here has mentioned that they have found the right person. And so it's just like every time I see that, I'm like, 
just DM them. Like, just message somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I, it, it happens all the time. And so I was just like, at like, I don't like a, reaching out to people. I don't rather just not talk to anybody. But it's like, when I, people need human interactions. <laughs> and so you got to like reach out at some <laughs> point. But I don't have to publicly tweet out that, hey, I'm looking for someone to play a game with me when you know that you have that circle. So it's like, I don't understand why it always has to be a public affair. I just think, I think I'm just big about not having everything being such a big public affair. You know what? Uh, I, I think that's, I see that so often. Yeah, that is, that is certainly a good point. I think that that goes hand in hand with just being a new creator in general. Right. I feel like that is definitely something that people, you know, have to sometimes learn the hard way, you know, and then somebody has to be for for right to like be, say to them like, hey, you know what? There's a better way to go about that. And I think that um, it's not easy or sometimes you could go for a really long time without somebody like honestly saying to you like, hey, there's a better way to do this. So I definitely appreciate what you're saying, especially with, you know, some of the social media presence, because like. I think social media presence is like your digital tattoo and everything that you do there is going to be, you know, remembered, screenshotted, shared, all that kind of stuff. So, like, it's extremely important to kind of be mindful about the things that you're putting out there. And you're right. Like, sometimes things come off more genuine when you just send them like a direct message. I will say, though, that sometimes, like, for me, I'm afraid to send somebody like a direct message because it's like, you know, oh, this person might be busy or like, you know, maybe they don't read DMs. They get a, a lot of creepy DMs. So they don't, you know, like always check that. Like, so that's why sometimes like for me, like I might put out like a public feeler and then it's like if I get a lot of interest, it's like, okay, that's a good idea. If I don't get a lot of in interest, that's like a crap idea. Throw it away. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I, 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 I just think that, yeah, that like, I'm the person that will be the last person to have confrontation or like to like talk to people. But it's like, what do you have to lose? If they do have that instance where they don't check their DMs or they don't do that, it's like, you know what? I tried. And then just find somebody else. Yes. <laughs> and so it's just like, it definitely has that weird things like, oh, I don't want to do that. But it also comes with the, the territory of getting to know someone in their space first so if they do see a dm from you they feel comfortable responding to you versus never having ever talked to them or getting to know them in their space true and then dming them because i just get the random dms i was like i have never talked to you before in my life <laughs> but then i get the dms where i'm used to seeing their people's usernames but like just being in my chat and then i respond to them they're like oh my god i can't believe you responded to me i was like like I know your name like I've seen it yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's like obviously I'm gonna respond because I feel comfortable because you took that time to like be in that area versus like automatically just be like hey I, I you do what I do and I like it let's let's play games <laughs> like wait, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> I don't know who you are yes but PT Vanessa has her hand up she's ready <laughs> I only have one additional comment to that and it goes like this Normalize the idea that people do not check their DMs every day. Please, I beg, I beg. Ash will tell you firsthand, Joy might be able to a little bit. I am extremely busy. Sometimes I will check in an hour. Sometimes it might be like four days. That is no tea, no shade to you. That does not mean they secretly hate you and want yeah. to kill your channel. It just means people have lives. Yeah. Sometimes the collaboration doesn't go through because life happens. Yeah. That that is not justification to then go and yell and scream at them for not collaborating with you. Like legit, there are days that I'll be like, I have this reply and I will never hit enter. And I'll be yep. a week later like, why didn't they answer me? And then I'll see it and I'm like, oh, I'm the clown. Yep. It's me. I was I'm gonna the one that runs the circus. Listen, I was gonna say that exact thing. Like, how many times have I typed out a response and then forgot to hit send? Because I know I have done that before. Like, yes. And you're right. Like, streaming, especially in the space that we're doing, like a lot of us are working full time. A lot of us, you know, not 
only do some people stream full time, but they also have regular full time jobs or they have a family that they care for or, you know, people in their lives that they have to, to take care of or, you know, trips and, and, and things that they're doing in their life. So, yeah, not everybody can be available for you at all the time. Don't take offense to that when somebody doesn't reply to you right away and be mindful like that, you know, real life exists. Hang on, Meadow has her hand up now, though. Yes, Meadow, please share. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the hand raising was relatable. Um, yeah, just two really small things I wanted to add on to that. Are one, I think it's a really great idea for any kind of collaboration to find out how people like to be contacted. Yeah. And this is not just true with collaborating with other streamers, but also collaborating with brands and trying to reach out to whoever their representative is or things like that. Some people like to be contacted through their Twitter DMs. I do not. Some people like to be messaged on Discord. Some people will tell you in their profile, if you're interested, send me an email here. And sometimes you join someone's Discord in order to send them a message because you're interested in collaborating. And then if you actually read their rules, it says, do not DM the streamer directly. Please contact a moderator if you would like to get in touch with them. And you have to DM their mod and say, I'm organizing this collab. Because I have a, a little bit of experience with the reaching out to someone a little bit colder because of things like organizing a three day long raid train or organizing the Shakespeare production where I needed like 10 different streamers who act, who are willing to take on that kind of time commitment. It meant reaching out to some people that I didn't know as well as someone that I would, for example, game with. And that leads me to the second thing I wanted to say, which is that if you wanna put on like big collabs where you're frequently having panels or you wanna organize a game show or something like that, you also have to be very okay with the fact that you are gonna get rejected. Yeah. Like. When I put together 20 streamers in a row to do like a cosplay raid train, obviously I reached out to a lot more people than that. And a lot of them said no. And it's really important like not to take that personally and just recognize like your collab is not a fit for them or not good for them at this particular time. And that's okay. <laughs> like The right people will be the people that say yes to you. Right, right. Or even like a no doesn't mean no forever in infinite time. You know, like no just means like, Hey, right now I'm working on TwitchCon and I'm working on GDQ and I'm working on uh, my own show and I'm working on blah, 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 blah. So like the next two months, no, but in three months, maybe, yeah, you know, absolutely. So those are all very good points. And I hope anybody who's considering um, collaboration that is new to it took notes on all of those great answers. So, all right. We are at the one hour and 22 minute mark. This show is 90 minutes. And um, I'm going to allow some time for any kind of chat questions. If chat has any questions, I'm going to ask one more question. Um, and then we're going to transition to ending the show. But thank you so much for all of your great input, your advice, your thoughts, and just getting to learn, you know, about how you view collaboration. It has been such a wonderful conversation. So if anybody has any questions, there is a channel point redemption in the chat. Um, <clears throat> it's ask and you can ask um, anything. And if we can't get to it offline, I'll try to get to it. So the last question I'm going to ask you is. Um, hmm. I have like five questions to, to go through. Um, mm, I will ask this. Is there is there a kind of collaboration that you've always wanted to do, but you haven't? Or is there a thought about what your dream collaboration would be? So um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Curious Joy, then Pleasantly Twisted, then Meadow, if that's cool. Is there a collaboration that I've never... Uh, oh, no. I feel like I'm that person that if I have an idea, I just do it. Okay. Like, so it's like, I never... <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know. Like, call, call that the Aries in me. Yeah. But like, I just... If I have the idea, I just do it. Okay. Um... And if it never happens, then it probably wasn't the best. If I forgot about it, then it probably wasn't the best idea anyway. But like anything that I think of doing, um, 
I want to go through with it. Yeah. Like I was going to do a party animals collab and like combine all the different facets of people that I know. Then I was like, you know what? I don't have time for that. Never mind. I'll <laughs> <doing that>. <laughs> <laughs> But then it's not like it's something like it was a cool idea in theory. But then I thought about, oh, my God, there's nine people. Oh, my God. How am I supposed to do this? Oh, my God. I have to organize all this. <laughs> right, 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 right. Never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, like I think everything that I would think of doing is already has already happened or in the process of happening. OK, like I still need to reach out to Vanessa to pick out a game because every game that she wants to play with me, I'm also like someone else asked me to do this, too. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm going to find the game for me and Vanessa. It's going to happen. It's gonna, it has to be a horror game because we're both super duper jumpy and we jump at everything. When we went to Burbank this weekend, my husband literally bust out laughing at me because the horn of the train honked and my entire body jumped and my eyes got big. And he was like, oh my God, what was that reaction? I was like, trains are loud. And he was just like, what? <laughs> but yeah, I want that just because it'll be really funny, I think, personally. And yeah. I'm so sorry to both of our communities. There will be screaming. You signed up for this. So <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I always, the one thing I want to do that I don't have any time to do whatsoever, but I still want to do it. I have, for the last five years, wanted to make a podcast called Work in Progress. Okay. And the entire premise of it was that I was gonna sit down and do interviews and conversations with game devs about their gaming philosophy and how they made the games that they did. And like, this is more fire sign energy. This is like this massive dream that I have. I wanted to interview like Maddie who did Celeste. I wanted to interview the devs of Hollow Knight. And I wanted to interview the people like Gunrella just announced. And I'm like, what made you decide that you want to do a game with guns, but also umbrellas? Like why, why was that the vibe? Yeah. I want this podcast like air and I literally do not have the time to do it. And it makes me want to just throw up everywhere. Cause I'm like, I want, if there's a podcast in a sea of podcasts that I want, it's that one. Where yeah. I'm just like, hi, I'm PT. And now today we're going to talk about the messenger and then how that folded into Sea of Stars, because I think that would be really cool. And it allowed devs to just talk about stuff like really, really candidly without all the extra noise of being on Twitter.com because, oh God, yeah, takes yeah, on yeah. Twitter exhaustion to the utmost degree. But I just, I have zero time for it whatsoever. So I literally have a spreadsheet of all the topics I wanted to cover with streamers and devs I wanted to talk to. And I just looked and I was like, I have no idea when I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my I'm, God. I have no clue. Oh, my God. The day that it happens, though, like, I will be tuning in, like, immediately. I cannot wait. because that sounds. So yeah. That sounds, I like, absolutely so incredible. Bad. Yeah. It's you know, I, like, I. Help? <laughs> Hold on. You can't just talk <laughs> smack to me in chat. <laughs> What is this? <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh my you gosh! To make that happen, what the heck? I want, I want it so bad, y'all. You have no idea. Like, and I'm just like, I sign up for so much stuff though, and I'm just like, okay. So, amongst being a host for GDQ on two shows, the project manager for GDQ, a different side project for GDQ, doing my own content, also trying to figure out my charity fundraising, and then just all cascades. And I look at it, and I'm just like, why do I hate myself? <laughs> Also, I am a full-time game dev. What? And you didn't even mention, like, sleeping, eating, you know. What? Playing a video game for yourself, you know. What? <laughs> Dave the Diver is still in my backlog. What do you mean? Oh, no, it's God. not. I never even started that game. I don't even know what that game is. Who's Dave? <laughs> what are those? I don't understand. Oh, my it's, God. Oh, my God. I need more hours in the day. Oh my gosh, I feel you. I think, and then I think that's a big thing too that needs to be like really fully expressed is like time, you know, like having these great ideas or having the thought of wanting to collaborate with people, but then your time not syncing up, like everybody on different time zones or, you know, having different schedules and stuff like that. That is a real big barrier to collaboration. So yeah, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Um, Meadow, do you have any like dream collabs that you'd want to do or something that you'd want to work on um, that you want to see happen in the future? I'm sorry, just now you and PT were talking about eating, sleeping. What what are these concepts? I don't know. 
something i heard in passing one day <laughs> okay yeah it sounded like vaguely familiar but I, I just wanted to own my ignorance so that those feel like foreign foreign notions it sounds to me. fake yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think it i think it might be fabricated but um I have so many dream collabs and also really relate to the, there's just not enough hours in the day. But one thing that has been like slowly in the works for a while now, since the last time I did a Shakespeare live reading is doing another one and improving on what I learned from that. Um, so if you are an actor who streams or you are just a streamer who enjoys acting or you're interested in classical theater, uh, reach out to me. Like I'm putting that out there right now on this stream that I'm interested in collaborating with you. Um, and another thing is that I really want to get into more tabletop RPG. So just putting that out there here too, like if you have a campaign, I'm interested in playing with you. And when we talked about like not reaching out to people cold, these are two instances where I'm like offering out here publicly that you are welcome to reach out to me about these things because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm excited and want to find other people to collaborate with on those things. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about acting stuff because that sounds real fun. And it's a it's a realm that I've never been a part of. And I just like to find out about new stuff. That sounds really cool. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people that always do like one shots and stuff for D&D. &D, yeah. So I can probably see if they're doing any campaigns to like invite Thank you. Thank you. In. Yeah, D &D that would be amazing. <laughs> but I <laughs> but I can at least try and help if you're that's something you're looking for. Heck yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! See, look at this collaboration happening right here. So meta. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we are at the 90-minute mark. I don't see any questions from chat. That is totally cool. Um, I am so happy to... Oh, we do have one question, actually. Would y'all rather collaborate on games you play regularly or new games for the both of you? Okay. Oh, you mean like the person also playing a new game? Would you rather collab on games you play regularly or like both of y'all playing a brand new game? Okay, okay. Does anybody want to take that question first? Does anybody have any thoughts on that? I have mixed thoughts because I feel like if it's something I've been playing, I would collab more offline than on. Cause I find that stuff to be a lot more interesting. Like right now, another side project I'm on is I'm working with uh, this wonderful, light, a lovely person called Goes on Ghost. We are working on the official Bloodborne Encyclopedia and it's really dope and it's a ton of information, but we also want to equip players with actual knowledge that, you know, the game never tells you because of course it doesn't. And so I have, God knows how many hours in Bloodborne but it's just really cool stuff and it's like we want people to feel like they can actually play the game and have the help that they need but then i like playing new stuff with people but my risk is always the risk i'm always worried about is what happens if we both don't like the game or like what happens if one of us doesn't like the game and the other one really likes it or what happens if they do goofy things in it like um the last time i tried to play uh yoshi's woolly world with my husband we both had to walk away from it because it just made us so angry it made us so angry mm -hmm. because whoever said it's a good idea to let each other eat one another and turn you into eggs needs to be interrogated heavily. Oh, it made us so angry. And if that would have been live, I'd have been so disappointed. Yeah. But you know, I also did my full code vein run live co-op style and it was great. And we beat up monsters and it was wonderful. And I had a big old axe, and now that character is my mascot for the channel. <laughs> so it's kind of a toss-up. It's kind of that. a little bit of a toss-up, honestly. I love that. Also, I just want to say thank you to Candy Bag CJ for the raid. Thank you so much. I hope you had a lot of fun playing Lies of P. Um, we're doing our streamer strategy show today, and it's about collaboration. I do want to call out one thing, PT, about the collaboration we did with Monster Hunter, where I'm like complete baby monster hunter player and you like walked me through and taught me about the game like that was one of the most fun times i ever had on stream because having somebody that never played the game before with an expert like i felt like even for people who were watching the stream that never like played it or even people who knew a lot about the game they learned a lot just from hearing someone explain it to someone who was brand new I like explaining games to people. This is why I write strategy guides and I want my objective is for people to have fun in their games. 
even when that game feels like it's overwhelming. So always, this is this is the open call. If you need help with things like Monster Hunter or Soulsborns, please call me. I will be, if not your mentor, your biggest cheerleader, 100%. 100%. I love that. I love that. Um, okay. Does anybody else, Joy or Meadow, do you have a thought on, um, you know, playing a game that's brand new or would you want to play something that you're already familiar with? I think it could be a mix of both. Um, like, because right now I'm doing the Boulder Skate thing, uh, which is a game you would never see me just outright play. In, but it was who asked me who I was like fine <laughs> yeah um, it's just like I it's still not a game that I would out like outright play on my own but it's just like I I made the commitment to play this game and I have fun playing games with my friends once a week um but then it's also the the thing like you said Ash where it's like knowing having someone that knows so much and then someone that knows nothing where then you can also learn a lot yeah um so yeah and then there's the fact there's also that side thing where it's like you either have the person that knows everything and then you take that person and pretend like you don't know everything especially when it comes to like uh resident evil 5 which i'm making midna play who she hates resident evil and so i'm like oh yeah there's this is this is fine <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's such a fun, chaotic way to play a new game because then it's like you get to see my reactions as somebody who's new, but then you also know what's coming up. So you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, it's I'm I'm that collab person that would torture somebody. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Meadow, do you have any thoughts? I think that the other panelists have already spoken to this really well. The short of it is that it depends. And I'd say anytime that you're uncertain if it's a good idea to jump into something brand new in a collab with someone or to go to something that's tried and true for you, uh, just consider what is it that you want to offer your viewers and in what way are you uplifting the person you're having on your channel? Uh, sure. Because if what you usually offer your viewers is like a first playthrough experience or that's something they'd really enjoy, then like you being really new at the game or your guests being really new at the game, is gonna be really aligned with what your viewers like seeing. And if that's something that your guests would enjoy, you know, that's also a big part of it. So just what's gonna show you off best, what your viewers are looking for, just always keeping that in mind. Awesome. Very well said. And um, with that, I think we're gonna call it here because we've been going for 90 minutes. I just wanna really, really, really thank all of my guests here for being open and honest and having such a great, transparent and thoughtful conversation with me here today about collaboration. Please, everyone from my channel that's here in the chat, you must, you must go and follow everybody here on this list right now. Thank you so much, chat, for being enthusiastic and cheering us all on. Um, I'm gonna go around the room and ask you all to reiterate what it is what it is that you do on twitch where they can find you and when your next stream is and um yeah thank you so much for being here so i'm gonna go meadow pt then joy okay hi again i'm meadow thank you so much for having us and yeah it was so lovely to get to know pt and joy through this a little bit as well and uh, i'm a variety streamer working on creating an overarching mystery story as the backdrop that brings together all my different variety streams, which I do as a variety of characters. Thank you. PT? Sorry, I had a moment of just like blanking out there. Hi, I'm PT or Pleasantly Twisted. If you go to the link, don't put vowels in Twisted. That brings someone that I don't know who that is and I don't claim them. <laughs> Again, we do a mixture of things, but it's predominantly JRPGs, Metroidvanias, roguelikes, you have to temper your high school kind of fun turn-based strategy romancy things with the need to go as quickly as possible. And then we do challenge runs and speed runs on top of that. And my, oh my God, that was really loud. Hi, my alerts are on now. Uh, my next stream is gonna be in about 15 minutes. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna go live after this because I wanna hang out with people and smack monsters around because there's fashion to secure. I am back in the beat of things. 
and I need this steampunk outfit that Monster Hunter has. I How dare it. they release this and not alert me immediately? So we're going to go out and get it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Joy? And I am Curious Joy. You can just call me Joy. I'm a JRPG and fighting game streamer. I stream every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And if you want to see someone have a mental breakdown as to how they're going to handle 2024, because every game that she was really wanting to play come out within days of each other, uh, that's me. <laughs> Starting January 26th, all the way into the end of February. Oh my God. All my favorite games. I love thing. it. I love it. It's, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, everyone, please do me a huge favor and give all of these incredible and talented creators a follow. Um, I'm going to go find somebody to raid, if that's cool. Um, I think I have a raid target in mind, if y'all are okay. I'm going to raid somebody that's in the, the Twitch Women's Guild, if that's cool. Um, their name is Elbel. They also stream lots of retro games and... They are really super talented and wonderful human beings. So thank you everyone for being here. I really appreciate your time and your energy next month. I'm not sure what the next show is going to be. I'm going to try and do it something around like sponsorships, how to find and attain sponsorships here on Twitch or in any, um, you know, online space. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>